Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. So how is everyone doing out there? I'm speaking for those who are in America who went through a voting process. Not sure if you voted or not. I did. My candidate did not win. I'm not happy. But I'm also not going to let it ruin my life. There's a difference between being justifiably angry because you do believe that something is not right. If you look all over yesterday, if you look in the right places yesterday, meaning not the mainstream media, not Fox, not News Nation, not Newsmax or any of these other groups, maybe one America News And America's News Network, I think it is, or Right Side News Network, I'm not sure which one, but along throughout the day, there were people that were reporting issues with voting. Look, we do not know God's ways. We do not know God's timing. So for us... We need to chill, relax, trust that God has this. If we have the ability to protest or if you're hearing in your state, for example, Arizona, Nevada, I think Georgia, Wisconsin, I think there's still stuff that's being quote unquote counted or cheated. I don't know. But if you have the ability to protest, then please, by all means, get out. Be peaceful. It's what this country is built on. Yes, that is exactly what was happening on January 6th until some bad players decided to make it look like an attack on the Capitol. If you are tuned in to citizen journalists and people who had their phones there recording everything, you would have seen that. But instead, you've only seen the select videos of people who were at the January 6th speech from Trump, again, trying to go after him. Have you ever asked, why do they hate Trump so much? What's up with orange man bad? It's because he's destroying their little system that takes full advantage of us, steals from us not only just elections, but our taxes and our children's morality and their lives, their reproductive abilities. This is what we're up against, and it is big. And we have to double down on prayer, we have to double down on fasting, and we have to double down on giving God our trust during this time, which is not going to be easy for many of us. Because if you're like me, you've been waiting for something to happen for a couple of years now. 
Sometimes it's like Charlie Brown and Lucy. I've got a girlfriend that I'm like, I'm sick of being Lucy'd. <laughs> I'm sick of having that ball pulled out from under me thinking I'm going to kick, kick a big old field goal here. Or that God's going to spike the ball in the end zone. Yes, I'm speaking football, sorry, American football. I'm not usually a sports scenario type of chick. But this isn't kind of the you win some, you lose some thing either. I have faith that God is going to destroy the evil. I just don't know how. I really don't. And I would love to participate. But I don't know if there's anything even going on where I'm at. Unfortunately, I think in America we're lazy. We wait for something to happen. We don't get up and do it ourselves. Even in the church. Even if we're looking for a program that would be great for us, right? Maybe we're a widow. Maybe we're divorced. Maybe there's no women's group anywhere. That's your age and you want to start one. But you haven't. Why? Because you're lazy. <laughs> I mean, you're probably really busy with other stuff. I already have too much on my plate. But a lot of it is honestly laziness. We would rather be comfortable in our own home, doing our own thing. Does this really affect me that much kind of deal? So if you can, and you're around a place where you know people are protesting, participate. That was the one thing that I told my husband. He's like, oh, the red wave didn't happen. I'm like, well, I don't know. Did it or didn't it? And of course, he's so tired of me talking about elections being stolen, things that are illegal happening, laws that are being created that are unconstitutional. I'm sure he himself wants this <laughs> to be over and done with as well. Let's figure it out and fix it. But I'm not going to let it ruin my day. I'm not going to let it ruin my week. I have a talk tonight, by the way, for any of you who are in Palatine, Illinois. I'm going to be at the church where I had my first communion. I received my first communion. I was confirmed. I had my first confession and my first marriage. And I also was catechized there, quote unquote. I have to tell that story tonight. Oh, yes, this is where I had CCD. And by the way, I didn't even know who Jesus was. <laughs> I didn't know the Eucharist and I didn't know why he died for us. Good catechism. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, if you're around, come on out. Seven o'clock central time, of course. If you're local, you know it's central time. And I don't think it's going to be broadcast or streamed anywhere. And then this weekend, I'm heading down to New Mexico. Albuquerque, Courageous Women in Christ. Join me if you can. And you can come from Texas, from Colorado, from Arizona, from Santa Fe. Come on down, Albuquerque. It's a, it's a full day. It's a full day on Saturday. And we're really going to talk about why do we believe what we believe. It's really going to be an awesome education on how to talk truth, speak truth with love, but also a little bit about my story. And I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not going to let the circumstances of what's happening get me down or make me angry. Because I'm going to trust that truth, as it always does, will prevail somehow, some way. And I'm just going to give it to God. It's so hard to do. But what else can I do? Again, like I said, don't know if there's any kind of protesting going on in my state. Doesn't seem to be visibly, although I wouldn't say that, down in Champaign, in the middle of the state, they reported some issues. But again, don't despair if you're like me who really wants conservative governance, conservative moral values in this beautiful, not only country of America, 
but the world. We all deserve it. I look across the world. This is not unique. The world is waking up to all of the horrific governance, the cheating, the stealing, the lying, the direct harm to people. It matters who governs us. Govern, government makes policy. Policy impacts people. People impact our lives. So it is important to be aware of what's going on. And it is important to keep praying and fasting. But we also have to allow God to do what God's going to do and still fight the fight. I, you know, I know that there's a lot of you out there that are like, I'm just done with this. You're all ticked off to that point. And there may be some of you out there that are like, this is exactly what we needed. We needed exactly this so that we could take that next step and look at things as quickly as we possibly can, or if not, as it's happening in some of these quote-unquote swing states, we call them. I'm just going to rest that God's got the perfect plan to wake up as many people as possible and to hopefully pull us out of this pit of hell that we're living in right now, probably slowly but surely, And that's kind of the way, maybe the best way it's going to happen. Slowly but surely so that everybody can see what's going on. And then everybody can say, well, we're never going to let this happen again. We all have to learn. It's just like me telling my husband, I don't think it was fair. And him looking at me like, well, what are you going to do about it kind of thing? And one day, hopefully, it will be proven that it wasn't fair. And then I can say, ah, see, not I told you so and a rub of your face in it kind of deal, but I know what I know in my heart. I know what God has told me is the truth. And our elections are not fair, open, and honest. I'm pretty sure he doesn't disagree, but without any kind of proof. And again, from his perspective, not looking at the stuff that I look at, he's not seeing any of it. So there's a whole part of this country, the world, who isn't seeing (laughs) what I'm seeing or what you may be seeing. So yeah, we're stuck. We're stuck in this weird spot. It's just like trying to convince our family to come back to the church when they want nothing to do with it even though they do see the great things that are happening in our own lives. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, touch our hearts. Give us peace. Help us to realize that your plans are yours, and we don't know what they are. But they're better than ours. We know that. And your plans work together for the greater good. So we are relying on you 100%. We are giving you our anger, our fear, our worry, our frustration, our lack of trust, our lack of faith in you. We're giving it all to you so that, Lord, you can do what you do. Which is to make things right, make things good. We beg you, we beseech you to make haste and do it quickly. We beg you, we know your timing is perfect, but we can still come to you with petitions, especially petitions that we want so deeply, so dearly in our hearts. And we give it to you. And we ask you to bless it and to make it be so, if it's your will. If not, at this time, We just ask for your peace so that we can live and love today and not be angry, bitter, frustrated. 
Help us to love you, trust you, love others, love ourselves, and be kind today, no matter what. A personal prayer. Thank you, Lord, for giving me my life today. It's my birthday. Help me to speak truth with love. Help me to be your conduit, your vessel at my talk tonight and over this weekend. So that you can touch many hearts with how you've touched mine. Help me glorify you, Lord. Mary, take our left hand. Holy Spirit, take our right. Help us walk today in peace, in love, in kindness. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All righty, everyone. Breathe. Find time with God, give it to him, let him fill you with his peace so that you can love yourself and love others today. That's your job. Okay, I love you all. Have a blessed and inspired day.